Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to what is probably going to be a running series here on the channel during winter 2020. And that is us getting together and talking about episodes of Bofuri. Uh, because that's all I wrote and I don't feel like saying the full name because it's long light novel titles. Before we get into today's discussion though, I do want to remind you all that if you would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Bo Furry video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. But with that said everybody, we're gonna dig into the first episode, Defense and First Battle. Now that is an appropriate title because that is basically everything that happens. Yes indeed, this whole episode is quite literally just defense and first battles and it is coming to us from studio silverlink who i really just know for tanaka kun is always listless and that's kind of it like i know that they've done other stuff but that's the show of theirs that i like and that's the main one i think of when i think of silverlink but if you've seen tanaka kun you'll know that it is very pretty and bofuri is indeed Super, super pretty. I actually really, really love the hell out of it. Even the OP and the ED, while being sort of like your typical stock kind of bubbly, bubblegum opening and endings, they, they're really pretty. <laughs> like, they're really, really pretty. And the whole show is very, very pretty. And I, I had to address that right off the top. I think, visually speaking, this is a really stunning show. In fact, I would go so far as to say it is so pretty that it has no right to be as pretty as it is. Like, I, with, I, I can't really call it an isekai, because it's not, but you are going to a VR MMO, but then in doing so, if you put on the Oculus Rift, are you entering an isekai, I guess? I don't know. You know what I mean when I say isekai. It's not an isekai show, it's a VR MMO show, which are also becoming very frequent. But given the, the typical VR MMO slash isekai fantasy genre that Bofuri finds itself in, it has no right to look as good as it does, and yet here we are. It is a visually stunning series. Th that is the biggest compliment I can give is that it is so, so pretty to look at. The, the color choices are fantastic, the glossiness of everything. I know some people find the, the glossy look to be annoying. I personally really dig glossy anime aesthetics, so I, I was really all about it. I think the character designs are fantastic. A lot of the armor looks great. Obviously, uh, Maple uh, or Kaide, our main character, her armor is obviously fantastic. It's one of the main reasons why I even bothered checking out the show is because I just thought that the armor design was really cool, and I was kind of confused why this adorable little anime character was wearing it. So I thought that was really interesting. I think uh, the, the world itself is also very aesthetically pleasing. It really feels like Final Fantasy Online, and there's a reason for that. And yes, I just called it Final Fantasy Online. I know it's 14, but it's the one that's online. <laughs> it's the first thing that I thought of. I'm sorry, I should have said 14. But there is a reason why it looks like Final Fantasy XIV, at least as far as I'm concerned, and that is because the original creator, uh, Yumi Khan, as far as I can tell, uh, they have to be either a Final Fantasy XIV fan or a big Square Enix fan because Squeenix's properties are all over this thing. Specifically Final Fantasy, but also a bit of Kingdom Hearts, and we'll get there. But the setting design, of the, the main hub that uh, that Maple finds herself in. It, you could say the start of Maple's story, if you will, wow. Uh, <laughs> the main setting, the sort of fantasy-esque building where you have like the, the buildings are almost made to look like trees with like leaves coming off the top of it. It feels very Final Fantasy, like some of the more cartoony Final Fantasies, like, like maybe like kind of vaguely Final Fantasy IX-ish just in terms of its aesthetics. Uh, although Final Fantasy, nah, maybe I take that back. Crystal Chronicles. I'm, I'm thinking of Crystal Chronicles. I don't know why it took me that long to think of it. That's a good game. It's getting a remake soon. We should play it. Anyway, enough about the art. Let's go ahead and get to our first introduction to Kaede and her friend Risa. And the Kaede-Risa dynamic is very much uh, reminiscent of a couple weeks back when we got the spear and shield reference in My Hero Academia, and that reference is very appropriate here since I have to assume that Risa will serve as the spear to Kaide's shield because Kaide is very much a shielder slash tank, 
that is her job. And Risa seems much more like the attacker type, and we do see later on, toward, actually like right at the end of the episode, Risa has medals on her desk that are specifically uh, in some way gaming related. So she's some type of top tier MMO player, and she's very familiar with New World Online, which is the game that the show takes place with. And she seems to be, to some degree, really, really good at MMOs. So I have to assume that she's going to be the one who attacks while her friend Kaide will be defending. And Kaide is also our friend too, since she's the main character. But the, the dynamic between them does stretch a little bit beyond just the fact that they're going to be a good balance to each other. But also the fact that Kaide straight up says like, how can I say no to her with those eyes and blah, blah, blah. And basically complimenting the hell out of her. And I'm like, listen... When I say it's hard to say no to my friends, it's because they're my friends, not because I find them, like, attractive. <laughs> so I have to assume that that was a little, like, nod to the more shippy sides of people. And y'all know me, I'm a very shippy dude. And I was like, oh, really? All right. <laughs> well, good to know, Kaide, Kaide and Risa. It's cute. I can, I, I can, I can sign off on this one. I, I do think it's fun that that Risa wants to share her love of gaming with Kaide, who seems to be not really interested in gaming all too much. Uh, she, she even says like, I can't remember the last time I, I bought a game. So I, I do think it's interesting that not only does Risa want to share her passion for gaming with her friend, friend in big air quotes, because like. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be a canon ship or anything. I'm just saying that, like, it's a thing. But also the fact that Kaide is willing to embrace her friend's passions and interests and take them on as something that she could also try to be interested in as well. And as we find out throughout the rest of the episode, she very much does become interested in the world that is New World Online. And why, yes, even the box art for New World Online is very, very Final fantasy E. It, it feels like a reference to the older Final Fantasy box art before Final Fantasy XV came on board and kind of got rid of like the white background with the pre-drawing on the front and then just the title uh, back when it was minimalistic and cool as hell. Not that Final Fantasy XV's cover is not as cool, but just like car. I love Final Fantasy XV and I love those dorky dude bros, but like, come on, even Bo Furry knows the white background clearly superior. But we can't just spend the whole time talking about New World Online's box art. That would be silly, and that's very clearly a job for Nakey Jakey. Your boy is here to talk about the actual episode of Bofuri, and we're gonna go ahead and jump past the box art and into the game itself, talking about entering New World Online. And this is where we find out that Kaide has decided that she wants to change her name to Maple when she's playing the game. And so anytime I'm talking about Kaide in reality, I'll say Kaide. If I'm talking about Kaide in the game, I'll say Maple. So that's gonna go forward throughout all the videos. And I gotta say that Maple interacting with the menu, like that little hub where she is at, before she enters the world proper, is again, very Square inspired. And which game am I talking about? You probably can tell. It feels very Kingdom Hearts. Like the way that she's surrounded by these weapons of specific classes and she has to choose. And the, and the way that she chooses to like walk over and she taps up, like taps it and picks up the the item and it just feel well she doesn't pick up the item like Sora picks up the item in his game but it did give me that sort of Sora having to pick between the staff the shield and the sword and here it is the same kind of setup in fact she even chooses the sh the shield much like I do when I'm playing Kingdom Hearts but yeah she's not playing Kingdom Hearts she's playing New World Online but I did think it was it was very King Kingdom Heartsy and again I have a feeling Yumi can uh, Yumi Khan uh, the original creator, is uh, a bit of a Square Enix fan, much like the rest of us. So I'm not faulting you. I'm just saying I can I can see I can see influences wearing them on this on the sleeve. I appreciate it. And again, once Maple enters the new world online, it, like I said, it is very Final Fantasy E, and that's not a knock. I'm saying it is super beautiful. The the setting feels very earthy, while at the same time feeling very fantasy at the same time. It's just, it's really, really pretty to look at. I love the aesthetics of the show. And that was, that's the first real blast of it, right? Is when she enters New World Online for the first time. And you get to see what the world's gonna look like. You get to see what the other characters are gonna look like. And it's really pretty. It, it is it is genuinely, it actually kind of blew my hair back a little bit. I wasn't expecting it to look that good. Cause I, I don't typically watch the PVs. So I kind of stumble into each show a little bit blind. 
And so that was a genuine surprise for me. I was like, wow, this show's gonna be really pretty, awesome. And uh, we, speaking of the characters as well, we actually do meet up with a, a this blonde girl whose name I didn't write down because I am a foolish, foolish boy. But uh, I, I have to assume that she's going to be important later since we see her in the OP. We, uh, we get the, that sort of vibe that they, they, their paths will cross again just, just based off how the, the scene kind of lingers after Maple leaves to go find the monsters that she had asked about. And this, the blonde girl and uh, her other friend there, uh, they, they kind of talk about her and then they kind of walk away. And the way the scene plays it, you can kind of tell that they're going to be important, if not la- now, then a little bit later on. And uh, this this is where we get into something that kind of... There's two things about the episode, right? There's two things. As much as I really enjoyed this episode, there's two things that really irked me. And that was Maple complaining that she's really slow and then just continuing to put points into Vitality, even though she is made very aware that her, the fact that she keeps putting points into Vitality is slowing her down. And she complains about it but doesn't solve the issue by just putting points into her movement. Urgh. This is like a thing throughout the entire episode. She, anytime she gets points, she's like, oh, vitality, vitality. It may as well just keep putting it into vitality. It's like, no, no. Now, listen, I have only ever played a tank in an MMO once. Uh, I played a Hobbit tank in Lord of the Rings Online. I believe they call them Guardians in Lord of the Rings Online. And it was fun. But I also was aware that I couldn't just spam everything into defense. I had to put points elsewhere if I wanted to actually be competent. And that's that's the one thing. That, well, that's one of two things that really irks me. But they kind of play into each other. That's that Maple has a hard time putting points into anything else. In fact, she literally does not do that. And just kind of casually carries on. And the other thing is that... Uh, and, and this is a big thing that kind of affects most of the episode... And that's that there's a lot of elements that really don't make sense given that this is meant to be an MMO. And that's the, um, the how quickly she gains abilities and the way she gains those abilities. I'm like, listen, I haven't played a whole lot of MMOs, but I have played enough to know that like you don't level up this quickly, especially on your own. And the amount of abilities that you're getting and the way you're getting them seem really silly. And it seems like this, that new world online should be very broken if she's able to just break the game the way that she does. Uh, I feel like more people would be really upset. And given that we know that uh, Risa is this big time gamer, if the game was that broken, would she really be playing it or would she be playing a more stable game? You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that just doesn't make sense. And later on, we actually get to see uh, Maple get her armor, like the armor that we see her have in the poster. And she specifically says it's one of a kind armor that gets stronger when it breaks. So I have to assume that the armor is made from Saiyan DNA, gets stronger when it when it nearly dies. And it's one of a kind. Now, when I say one of a kind, I don't mean, oh, it's armor that's really difficult to get. You have to get it from specific parts. No, no, no. I mean, Maple is the only person in the entire game. And keep in mind, this is a VR MMO, massively multiplayer online game. She is the only person in the game with that armor. Could you imagine if other MMO games like added in like this, like one, like one person, like some dude in Nebraska gets this rad looking armor in in Final Fantasy 14 and he's the only person on the planet with that armor. People would be pissed. I don't know why shows do this. Like it's okay for characters to have the same armor. Like I can look cool and then acknowledge that another player with the same armor that I have looks cool, but maybe our avatars look different. So we stand apart even though we wear the same armor. Now I'm not saying that the show falls apart because of this. It doesn't like it doesn't need to be totally reliant on the MMO thing. It doesn't have to obey all the rules of MMO games, but I just, I went in thinking that this was going to be very true to MMOs, and it's more just like an excuse to have a fantasy setting without really being an isekai. And you can tell that that Yumi-kun, like I said, is a big 
fan of gaming. I just don't think that they're a huge like MMO player as much as they just like the idea of MMOs in the same way that I am. I'm not a big MMO fan. I just like the idea. And again, if that's what the show wants to do, I'm pretty much okay with that. I just have to know that going forward. It, it's it's clear that Yumi Khan, the original creator, is a big fan of gaming, but they're willing to kind of bend certain rules in order to fit their story. And now that I know that, I'm okay with that, but at first there was like moments where I'm like, wait, that would never happen. But now that I know that, I can kind of eject that from my brain for a bit. But that doesn't stop me from still being weirded out by certain other things in the episode. For example, uh, the whole dungeon scene in general, which is really funny, honestly. And it kind of reminded me of, of all things, Ari Furetta, because what ends up happening is Maple stumbles across this like Hydra dragon thing that shoots out poison. And earlier in the episode, she built up like a poison immunity. And I gotta say, like, this is the one thing I will give Maple. Even though she's not a big gamer, she is very capable of handling herself around monsters. She's not great at building specs for her character. Her stats are really, really, really imbalanced. But she's able to handle herself within the VR MMO space. And she's actually able to kind of fend off monsters pretty cleverly. Like, during the fight with the Hydra, she's actually able to build up her poison immunity because of how the show set it up earlier in the episode that she's able to kind of build up immunity by taking poison damage over time building up that immunity and she was given potions from our boy Kromu earlier on and she uses all those potions in this battle with the dungeon boss that hydra dragon thing and actually builds up immunity just in time to not die and then with no weapons, since her weapons and shield are melted away by the Hydra dragon, she just, she just bites the thing. And then when she realizes it can do damage, she just straight up eats it. And I was like, okay, what is with these fantasy series and just deciding like, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna eat the monster. <laughs> like, what is going on? Because it's not like Ari Furetta and Bofuri are the only ones doing that. There is that 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 dungeon, that, what, what, that one dungeon sh book, novel series, I don't know, manga, whatever it is. The one dungeon crawler thing where they like eat the monsters that come across in the dungeon. Why hasn't that been animated yet, by the way? I, I feel like people have been talking about that series forever and it still hasn't gotten an anime adaptation. But regardless, for some reason, a lot of folks seem hellbent on eating the the magical creatures within vr mmo games or mmo games and and isekai shows in general whatever it doesn't matter it was really funny <laughs> and i actually kind of dug it because again it was a, a funny cute way to wrap up the fight and the show's not really intent on being this like really hard hitting vr mmo experience like it's meant to be a cute fun vr mmo story about a girl who learns that she it can be a pretty awesome shielder if she feels like it. And it's it's not really meant to be a super serial gaming series. It's just kind of meant to be cute and fun. And, and at least that's what I got from episode one. And yeah, knowing that having her like eat the monster to death is kind of funny. Also, the monsters are super cute. Uh, I didn't really have anywhere else to mention it, but I just want to say, yes, the monsters are really friggin' adorable. The Hydra Dragon's creepy, but like all the other monsters are like really, really friggin' cute. And uh, we even see our MC like get emotional over accidentally killing the, the bunny, who is the cutest friggin' mob uh, mob creature I have ever seen. That bunny thing is adorable. But on that note, everybody, I'm gonna wrap up my thoughts here. Uh, I'm happy to give this premiere for Bofuri a B. This is a show that wasn't super on my radar. I was planning on checking it out, but it wasn't on the top of my two watch list. And I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised. I, uh, I hope this this video series pops off because I would love to continue talking about Bo Furry, if I'm totally honest. I actually really dig it. And that's going to do it for today's video, everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And before we go, as always, I have to give a big, big thank you to the good folks over on Patreon, especially those in the Earl Grey tier, Andrew W., Calvin A., Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G., Digger the Fox, Dominic G., Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, Godzilla Fan, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Marshall B, Mirth Mouser, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Steven G, Sakochi, Tristan G, 
and Veridin. A huge thank you to all of you in the T-Squadron for your continued support, and if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then be sure to check out the first link in the description to check out our Patreon page, see all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord for as little as a dollar a month. And with that said, we're going to wrap up today's video, everybody, so thank you all once again for watching, and if you are feeling stressed out today, then you go have yourself a warm cup of tea, and I will talk to you all again real soon.